hi, this is Arise Cake Creations and I'm Sarah. I've wanted to try this trend out for a while, but I didn't have a reason until now. It was my husband's birthday recently, so I thought this was the best time to try it. This is the cake top forward trend with buttercream marble, rice paper sails, and a simple and easy rice paper flower that can be decorated onto cakes or cupcakes. So if you like what you'll see, keep watching, let's get started. I've listed all of the information of the equipment that I've used on my blog at AriseCakeCreations.com which also lists information about rice paper and also how to store your rice paper decorations once you've made them. So to get started we're going to begin by making the rice paper decorations. Now I've got prepared some half sphere silicone mould which is the same mould that I use for making hot chocolate bombs. Now I'm actually cutting out some random circles but my circle sizes here are 2.5 centimetres, 4 centimetres and 7 centimetres which are actually going to fit directly into the moulds once they've actually been wet and actually placed in the moulds to dry. I'm also cutting some triangle shapes, about four pieces in total, which follows the same principle as my rice paper sails and also my fantasy rice paper flower. I'll leave a link in the iCard for those tutorials. You can use a silicone mat to actually dry your rice paper onto if you prefer to do that, but my preferred method is to use scrunched up parchment paper or baking paper. So you'll begin by pouring your water into your container. Now I decided on this cake I didn't want to colour the water at all, but if you do want to do that then this is the stage to do it in. I wanted to keep my sails in a plain colour and then colour them up at the end. The round rice paper, once they've been soaked, need to go into the half sphere moulds ready for them to dry. For the triangle pieces, follow the same process, soak them, but this time you'll either place them onto your scrunched up parchment paper or onto your silicone mats, whichever your preferred method is, ready for them to dry. The two methods to dry rice paper is into the oven at 80 degrees Celsius, 175 degrees Fahrenheit for around 20 to 30 minutes and then turn off the oven and then leave them in there for a further 30 minutes to dry with the door slightly ajar or you can air dry them. However, air drying them will depend on the um, environment that you're in in terms of the length of time it will take. So while the rice paper is drying, we can move on to preparing the cake. Now I am actually using my delicious vanilla buttermilk cake, which I'll leave a link in the iCard for that recipe and all the details again for all of the equipment on my blog at AriseCakeCreations.com. So for me, I always prepare my cakes by cutting away the caramelization on the cakes and also brushing them with vanilla simple syrup. There's a recipe for that also on my blog at AriseCakeCreations.com as well. Now the heat in Thailand was a bit of a battle. It's around about 36 plus degrees, which is about 96.8 um, Fahrenheit. So I was fighting with my buttercream, which is Swiss meringue buttercream. So I decided to add some white chocolate ganache to it. Now, if you want to see details and further information about that, please again, go to my blog where I explain in detail about how I actually made this white chocolate Swiss meringue buttercream to prepare to put into my cakes to make it more stable so that it actually stands up to the heat as well. Ensure that your cake is actually stacked evenly before actually crumb coating the outside of your cake and the crumb coat will basically just make sure that you trap in all of those crumbs before you add on your final layer. The crumb coat layer is also just a thin layer really just to trap those crumbs in so it doesn't need to be perfect at this stage. Use a cake scraper to smooth the edge and the top parts of the cake before placing it into the fridge 
for about 20 to 30 minutes. Again, depending on where you are in the world and what the heat is like, I myself had to put mine in the fridge for a bit longer so I had enough time to work with it against the heat. Once your crumb coat is actually firm to the touch, you can begin by adding on your final layer. Now, again, even with a final layer, you may find you have to do this several times. And again, because I had problems with the heat here, I actually had to layer mine about two or three times before I could actually get it smooth. So don't rush this part, just keep going until your cake is lovely and smooth and you have lovely sharp edges if that's the style and design that you're going for. Once your cake has been chilled in the fridge for at least up to an hour, take another disc and cover it with parchment paper, baking paper. Um, this will now rest on the top surface of the cake to ensure that it stays nice and smooth. You will now grip your cake really carefully and flip it over. So don't be scared about this, but confidently flip it over and then gently release away the disc that was on the base so that you will now actually show or expose the cake that's there. Cover the exposed area of cake with your buttercream. Now make sure you do this carefully and also neaten up the sides and the edges as well with a cake smoother. Again, take your time doing this to make sure it's as neat and looks as lovely as it possibly can. Once your cake has been smoothly covered, pop it back into the fridge for at least another 30 minutes or so, or until firm to the touch so that before you move on to the next stage. So in order for the cake to actually stand on its side, we're actually going to cut away a section of cake. So you need to decide how much cake you cut away. So I actually cut away only a small amount because I wanted to leave quite a lot of cake um, exposed as I stood it up on its side. So the exposed cake again will be covered up with more buttercream. Again, do all that you need to do using your cake scrapers to make sure that this is actually as smooth as you possibly can before popping it back into the fridge again for maybe a further 20 to 30 minutes or until it's firm to the touch and ready to move on to the next stage. Now I wanted to do a marble effect on this cake so again you can choose to do this or you can choose to leave this off. Now the marble effect can actually either be done on an acetate sheet or again with grease proof paper, parchment paper, baking paper, whatever you call it, wherever you are. Um, but I prefer to use an acetate sheet because I find it doesn't actually wrinkle. So I'm actually doing like a, a black and white grey marbled effect and I'm just using gel colour to actually draw marble lines just don't overthink this, just draw random lines on and then gently actually smooth the buttercream on. I'm also using um, the gel colour to actually colour some of the buttercream on my palette knife before placing it down onto the acetate disc. But you want to actually do it very, very gently as you put your buttercream down. You don't want to mix it in too much. Just literally place it down very, very, very carefully. Once you have enough buttercream down covering up that marble effect, you need to smooth that back as smooth as you possibly can. Then lift your acetate sheet or parchment paper up, have your cake ready and position it onto the surface of your cake. Now you may have a lip of uh, parchment paper or acetate hanging over the edge, but this is fine. You can just use a palette knife just to actually brush away or wipe away some of the excess. You will also need a cake smoother. Now this is actually quite important to actually smooth, gently smooth down the actual um, buttercream to adhere it to the cake and it also helps to actually get rid of any trapped air bubbles that might be there. 
pop that back into the fridge to chill and firm up for at least, again, another 30 minutes to an hour before you actually take away that parchment paper or acetate sheet. Once all your rice paper decorations are dry, remove them from either the parchment paper and also your silicone moulds as well. Now, I kept my rice paper sails clear because I wanted to paint them gold. I mixed together a selection of golds by Sugar Flare and painted the top edges of the sails gold and also the um, discs to be made into flour, also the edges painted gold as well. Once the marble design is firm to the front of the cake and it, the cake is well chilled, you should be able to pull away the acetate or the parchment paper with ease. You can then use a palette knife to actually clean up the edges and then use some buttercream to fill in any air pockets or holes that you may have to make sure it looks as smooth and as neat as possible. Have your cake board or cake stand ready to hand and release the parchment paper or greaseproof paper from the actual board that the cake is sitting on. Hold the cake carefully in your hand by the parchment paper end and then place your board into position at the end that's been cut off and then gently actually turn it over with the board at the same time pulling away the parchment paper. Your cake should now be sitting on the board perfectly. If it's not in the right position, you can use a palette knife just to move it into position so it's in the right place. Using the same gold painted onto the rice paper sails and rice paper discs, we can actually paint along the uh, jagged edge of the marble edge and also some gold flecks into the marble design as well. Using piping gel, and I have actually got a homemade piping gel recipe on my blog at ricecakecreations.com. You can now position the sails and also the flower discs into place. Now you don't need to use too much, but just enough to help it to adhere to the cake and stick well and firmly in place. Arrange all your other rice paper decoration pieces exactly how you want them to be on the cake. So I actually had a fan of them coming on from one side and then I actually positioned in the end three flowers on the front and actually used some gold um, sugar pearlized balls to actually place into the centre as well. The most important thing in all of this, hubby was happy with these trendy cake top forward cake and I was super happy with the way it turned out. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that you will give it a go because those flowers, um, the rice paper flower discs are really simple to do and this is a really, really fun, um, easy trend to try and achieve. Now, don't forget, if you try out this cake, please remember to share it with me over on Instagram or Facebook. Do hashtag Arise Cake Creations to tag me in. I really, really want to see your designs. I'm sure they're going to look fabulous. Don't forget to like, share any questions or ask any questions, comment and subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you can be notified every time I upload a new video. Thanks for watching. See you soon.